you can kind of understand why people do say that religion is a mental illness or spirituality is a mental illness because of the mental pressure you place yourself under. Now, with beliefs where you're meant to experience some kind of divinity, is it any wonder that people describe it as being an actual mental illness in those cases? Admittedly, the use of the term mental illness is more of a metaphor than being something literal. However, the mental pressures involved are considerable. For example, you have people in meditation classes who will spend the entire session trying to reach through to their higher self or trying to contact their spirit guides. And they're simply pushing themselves, pushing themselves to break free from what is actually real. You have bizarre ideas of reaching enlightenment and people think if they push themselves, they'll reach a level of enlightenment, spirituality, oneness, wholeness. So you have some people out there who will meditate for days trying to get themselves to be more spiritual, more calm, but because they're not dealing with the root of the problem, they don't really deal with the problem per se. They'll hold conflicting ideas, of course. They'll say, oh yes, it's real. They're trying to convince themselves. They know there are discrepancies. They know it doesn't work in reality. They know with their rational mind that these things are not real, that they do not work, but they want to believe so much. And indeed, have you ever noticed how many so-called spiritual people are running away from reality? I've known many who want to become New Age practitioners, not because well, they want to simply make a quick buck, but because they want to do something spiritual with their life, something which has some kind of greater, higher meaning. And they're also people who find that the minuscule work they're usually involved in is not fulfilling. So rather than coming to peace with their own skill set or trying to develop their own skills so they can climb the career ladder, instead, they simply turn towards spirituality. Thinking if they go on a crash course for Reiki or therapeutic touch, they might well end up becoming a Reiki practitioner and can make a steady living doing a few healings a day. Many such people are vulnerable. They're looking for something to help them along. But typically the ideas they cling to don't help them to move forward. They simply allow them to stagnate but feel comfortable with their level of stagnation. Clinging to the idea of spirituality, of some kind of greater truth, that they're doing something more with their life, when in actuality all they're doing is holding some crystals and meditating twice a day, thinking that they're moving forward in their existence. You typically have the inflated ego heavily involved too. The idea that you're a divine being. You're not a person, a body that's living. You are a spiritual entity inhabiting a vessel, and then you'll move on to greater things. The hardship you've gone through in this life will make you stronger, more enlightened in your next life, in your between life existence. That your next incarnation will be greater, that you'll receive rewards because of your good karma. But very often while people are thinking this, there's doubt, doubt, doubt. Oh, there are moments of joy, moments that are high, moments that are low. But the doubt does not really leave you. Minor doctrinal differences cause great divides within the spiritual community. There are people who make very different claims, have very different ideas. There are several mainstream elements, as well as a large variety of different and more minor practices. In effect, the practices of spirituality are not unlike what I've spoken about before in regard to self-help. Self-help is about taking on ideas to help you to move on with your life, to move forward, my problem with self-help is that many people do not move forward. They believe they have, they believe they've changed, but what they've really done is simply change the way they think about their own situation. Spirituality is as bad, if indeed not worse, in what they do. They cling to ideas and do not, do not truly move forward with their life, believing that meditation and the concept of some kind of greater existence to come is enough of a payment and that they don't need to really work on what they have now. Their idea of work, their idea of progress, is so limited, believing that getting a Reiki level 1 and level 2 is sufficient, that they can become a practitioner, and that is enough. When really, all they've gained from this practice is practically nothing. The cognitive dissonance is where they take on various ideas. They can accept that cold reading exists. They can understand how it works and yet still go along to a mediumship show or to a one-to-one -one psychic reading, and they can 
believe that what they're getting is true, that it's real, that it's genuine psychic stuff, even though they know the tricks, and even though the information isn't very good, they will make things fit. They know that cold reading works in those ways. They know how it works. They have a rough idea, yet they will accept it as being true, and they will make information fit, even though that's a core element of doing a fake psychic reading. So they want to believe so hard they overcome their reason, their emotionality about perhaps their future, uh, potential wealth and fortune, or dead relatives. I mean, that can really drive people to put aside their reason, even if they know that cold reading exists and how it works. If you get so-called spiritual people to open up, you'll find they've got so many doubts. You know, they might put on a pleasant face on YouTube, or at a psychic event. But if you know them as a friend, you'll get them talking about their doubts. How do they know something's spiritual or psychic? How do they know something's not psychological or a naturalistic situation that they're attributing to some kind of magical phenomena? Rather than following through with that kind of thinking and coming to some sound conclusions, including noticing the pseudoscience, they will put aside their reason because they want to accept what is magical, what is wonderful, what is beautiful in some way, rather than accepting what appears to be, at least from their point of view, to be a cold and uncaring existence. So in other words, spiritual religious beliefs give a person a sense of context and meaning in their existence, self-importance and the idea of progression, even if in reality they are not moving forward, they're merely deluding themselves. In this way, many people who are spiritual, and people in mainstream religion, will simply presume that the outside, that's to say moving on from a belief, is going into a meaningless view of reality. 